Hi, my name is Jan Tvrdík, and today we'll talk to you about PHP stun. Specifically, I will talk about how PHP stun works internally. So, PHP stun is, is a tool for static analysis. It can gather information about code without actually executing the code. And it can use this information to find bugs in our code. So PHP stun is loosely based on abstract interpretation theory. And abstract interpretation theory uses the idea that to analyze a code, you can execute it. It may seem counterintuitive, but it has, like the abstract interpretation, it has the name interpretation in it. So it's, it's a form of interpretation, but there is a trick. The abstract interpretation is an interpretation of the code which changes the semantic of operation. Specifically, while normal interpretation operates on concrete values, PHP stun operates on a set of possible values. Let me show you, let me show you what I mean. We have a simple code. We assign the number two to the A variable. During normal execution, the number two would be assigned to the variable. But that is not how PHP stun works. PHP stun doesn't operate on concrete values. It operates on sets of possible values. So instead, it assigns a set which consists of a single element, which is the number two. Right? That is the difference. Let me give you another example. We have this ternary expression. Right? You, if this code would be executed normally, uh, then the, the, the the return value of the random int call would be known, but PHP stun cannot know what is what what the random int will return. So it must evaluate both of the branches, right, and combine the results. So first, it evaluates the positive branch, and it looks at all the possible values that the positive branch can have, and there is only one. So it so it creates a tiny, tiny little bit of set which has just one num, just one member, and that's the number five. Then evaluates the negative branch, right? And the negative branch is, again, a very simple expression, so it can, the set of possible values that the negative branch can have is, again, very simple. It's just the number seven. Now, to compute the type, the set of possible values for the entire ternary expression, PHP stun will use a set union. Right, it will it will union the sets of possible values for the positive and the negative branch, which will create a new set which is again very small but slightly larger. It has two members and these are the numbers five and seven. Right, so that's that's like the first rule which PHP stun uses when it's merging results from multiple branches. It uses union operation on the sets. Now, another example, right? We know the set of possible values for both the A and the B variable. And because those sets are so small, PHP stun can evaluate all the possible combinations that may happen. So it will first multiply the number number, numbers 2 and 5, which will give them, again, tiny, tiny set with just a single number, number 10. Right? It will multiply numbers 2 and 7, and then it will combine, again, it will combine using the union operations the, to get the set of possible values that the entire expression can have, right? So it will determine that the set of all possible values that a C variable can have at this point is, uh, is, uh, is a tiny set with just two members, the numbers 10 and 14. Now let's have a look at another example, this time with condition, a type guard. Uh, by carefully looking at the condition, PHP stun can see that if the condition is true, then, uh, then the set of possible values for the C variable must be a subset of a set consisting of two members, 9 and 10. Right? That is the requirement that is extracted from the condition but it also knows that the condition itself doesn't introduce new values. So to, to, com so to compute the actual set of possible values for the C variable inside the positive branch on the condition, it will 
combine what it known about the set of possible values for the C variable before the condition and what, you know, with the constraints that are extracted from the condition. Right? So that is another rule that PHP Stan uses. And when it's crossing uh, a condition boundary, then it will extract information about the constraints that are, that, are, uh, that are contained within the condition, and it will use intersection set operation to combine what it has known about the type of the variable before with, with, the, with the constraints that are within the condition. And in this case, there is only one value that the C variable can have in the positive branch, and that is the number 10. But again, it's wrapped within a set. Right? Now, again, we have a very simple operation that because the type the set of possible values for the C variable is very small. Uh, PHP Stan can compute this accurately, and we to determine that the, the set of possible values for the D variable is the number 11. Right? Now, to compute the negative branch, right, PHP, uh, PHP Stan will once again look at what is the set of possible values that we have known for the C variable before the condition and then it will again look at the condition itself and extract information about what the values can be. And it will use a set difference operation to remove the values that we know that cannot be within the set of possible values for a C variable within the negative branch of the condition. Right? And in this case, the resulting number is 14 wrapped in the set. So that's another rule. Right? Sometimes when we go through a condition, we, we use intersection, and sometimes we use difference. Right? So we either know that some value must be in the set, or we know that some values cannot be in the set. Right? We have, again, simple addition. You can compute it precisely. We have a set with number 16. Now, we will use the same trick we have used before when we have the branch in the ternary operation. Right? So to compute a set of possible values for the D variable after the, after the entire if statement, PHP Stan will use the union operation to combine the set of possible values from the positive branch with a set of possible values of the negative branch, and we will get a set consisting of numbers 11 and 16. Right? And it's important to note that these algorithms, these patterns, that we have just shown to work on tiny sets, so very small sets of possible values, that they also work on gigantic sets. It doesn't matter how large a set of possible values is. This will always work. Also, have you noticed how, how impractical it is to use the term set of possible values? Like, it's so long. It would be much better if there was a shorter term, like ideally just one syllable like that. That would, that would be... That would be amazing, right? And it turns out that there is such a term. We usually, instead of calling it a set of possible values, we use the term type, right? So when you think about type, it is important to understand that what it really means, that it's, that it's an abstraction of a set of possible values. Now, there are also some other terms that we may introduce, right? So instead of set, we will use the term type. Instead of subset, we will use subtype. Instead of superset, we will use supertype, right? We will, use, we will keep the name for the operations, right? So union on, on sets, we will still call it union, intersection, difference, complement. The operations name remain the same. Instead of the universe set, which represents the set of all the possible values that can exist, then in type theory, we call it a top type, right? And, and the opposite of this, is an empty set. It's a set that contains no values, right? And in type theory, this is what we call the bottom type. The top type in PHP is commonly known as mixed. The bottom type is commonly not known, right? But the terms that is used by PHP Stun and is also used by, for example, TypeScript or Swift is never, right? Now, let's think more about like real types, right? For example, the integer type. It represents a set of possible values 
that contains all of the integers. Like, that is a lot of values. Right? That is a, really a lot of values. Or think about how massive is the set represented by the array type. Like, there are so many possible array values that can exist. It's a massive set. Right? Computing on each individual member of the set would not really be feasible. Right? So PHP Stun is an abstraction to reason over these massive sets. And this abstraction is called the type interface. Right? So that is the foundation by which PHP Stun models the sets of values. Now, PHP Stun has many implementations of the interface. Basically, for any set that we think it would be handy to be able to accurately represent, PHP Stun has an implementation of the type interface. Right? The, there are two what we may call boundary types. Right? That we have the mixed type, which represent set of all the possible values that can ever exist. And we also have the very important never type. Right? Never type represents a set which contains no values whatsoever. It is the return type of functions that always draw exceptions, for example. Right. But we also have like, the all basic types that you may expect in PHP. We have Boolean type, load type, and so on. We have all of them. Right. For increased accuracy, PHP Sun also has constant types. Right. So the integer type represents all of the possible integers. Right? It's a massive set, but sometimes you may want to have more information. Right? So we have a constant integer type, which represents a set with just a single value that is some concrete integer. Right? Or the constant Boolean integer float and strings are basically the same. They always represent a set with just a single concrete value. The constant array type is a bit trickier but it represents a set of all the possible arrays that have the same constant keys. Right? So the keys of the constant array type are always of type constant integer or of type constant string. Now, even with this type, it would not be very practical to have a custom implementation for all possible combinations of type that might occur in PHP. Right? So for example, there is no class that would be named string or float type. Right? So instead, to create more complex types, PHP ha the PHP Stun has two combination types, which, which can be used to, to model the set, the, the, un the union and intersection set operations. Right? As you may have noticed that in the, the, in the Initial example, we have used three operations on set. We have used union, we have used intersection, and we have, we have used difference. Right? So you notice there is no difference type. So that's a, like a missing piece in the PHP stun. Like the difference type is not used very often, so PHP stun get by by not having it. But in the future version, we may add the difference type, because there are some cases the PHP stun cannot currently model accurately, because there are, there are cases where you need model, you need to model the different set operations, but PHP stun doesn't have a type of imp implementation that would do that. All right? And there are actually more, even more implementations, but we'll talk about them later. Now, creating this type is actually very simple. We just do new, right, and then create the type. Right? The union and intersection types. They just accept array of the types, and they represent the union or the intersection of these types. Easy. Now, I have said that there is an abstraction. And the abstraction is called the type interface, which obviously leads to the question, like, what method does the interface have? Like, what methods do you need to model a mathematical set? Right? And it turns out that you mostly can get by with just a single method. And the method is called is super type of. Right? It's a method which accepts another type. And it returns the information about the relations of the current type with the other given type. Now, there are three possible cases that might happen. Right? First, like if you ask the type A, 
whether it is a super type of type B. Right? Then one, one case that might happen that yes, A is actually a super type of the type B. Right? Another situation that might happen that these two types have nothing, nothing in common. The, their intersection is empty. Right? This is, for example, the case of string type and integer type. There is no value that is at the same time of type string and of type integer. Right? But it is very important for PHP stun that there also exists a third case. It is the case where A is not a supertype of B, but these two types have something in common. For example, the callable and array type. Not all arrays are callable, and not all callable values are arrays. But there exist such values that are at the same time arrays and that are callables. And we call this type we call this state maybe, right? This is actually very important for PHP stun. Right? You might have expect that a method which starts with this, like the method is called is super type of. You might have expected this method to return a boolean, right? But instead, PHP stun uses something called trinary logic. It uses it which has three states instead of two, right? So it carries more information. Now, why is this important? The third, the, the yes and no state are fairly obvious, but the maybe state, it carries uncertainty, right? In PHP, PHP code, what happens a lot of the time, that stuff are not exactly known, right? There is a lot of uncertainty when analyzing PHP code, and it is incredibly important that the PHP son can model this state. It understands when it knows something for sure, and it understands when there is uncertainty. Now, there is this method. But what can we actually do with this method? Right? I will go through a few examples of when PHP Stun uses this method to, to perform some operations to determine some knowledge. Ah, okay. We have this very simple example. We have a require in function. And we have a call to this function, right? The require in requires an integer type, and we call it with number one to three, right? And you can see that this is a, this is a valid code, but why is it valid, right? How can PHP stun know that this is a valid call, that you can actually call the function with an integer, right? And the reason why it knows, because the int type is represented by integer type implementation of the type interface. And the one to three value is represented by the constant type, int the constant integer type, right? And what PHP stun will do, that it will use the super type method to understand what is the relationship between these type, right? So it will ask, it will ask the integer type whether it is the super type of the number one to three, right? Which which means which is equal to asking whether the one to three value is a sub subtype of the integer type. And because the function returns, yes, it is indeed, it is indeed a super type, right? We know that this is valid, right? Because it means that for all the possible values that are within the set represented by the constant integer type, right? That all of these values are also at the same type, members of the integer type, right? So there is no value that could cause problems. Now, same example, but different value, right? Now, the situation is that if you ask the integer type whether it is the super type of the constant string type, right, then it will tell you no. And, then, and the value no means that there is no common value. There is not a single value that is at the same time, the letter 8, and at the same type integer, right? So it knows for sure that this code is invalid. Now we have a slight variation. We have, instead of just not one number, we have, we have a union of two numbers, right? But once again, right, if you ask the integer type whether it is the super type of the union of the numbers one and two, right, it will return, yes, I am indeed the super type, which means it will always work, right? The same case with the string types, right? And again, this time it will return, no, which means there is not a single value that is at the same time either A or B. 
and at the same time it is a member of the integer type. Like there is no value for which this call may work. Now, here comes the, the last and important case, right? We call the require int with a union of two values, of the integer one and of the letter a, right? And now if you ask the integer type, whether it is the super type of this union, right? It will return maybe, because it understands that there are scenarios for which this may work, and there are scenarios for which it will not work, right? And based on level, you configure in PHP stun. PHP stun will either mark as error, or it will say, well, it seems that it could work, right? And it will not report it as error. Okay. Whew. Let's do another example. We have a function which accepts a nullable integer. And we do have few checks. We do have a comparison with null. We do have an is string guard. And maybe we have three required int calls. And we, we also do have some early terminations. Now, the task now is to determine which of these three required int calls are wrong and which of them are OK. Now, how would PHP Sun approach this problem? First, right, it will look at what is the initial type of the n variable, and it will know that it is a union, union of an integer and null, because it's, that's what's given in the parameter. Right? Now, it will look at the condition, right, and it will understand that if this condition is taken, that it means that the, that the type of n must be a subtype of the null type, right? And now, based on the same rules that we have used in the initial example, right, when crossing the, the condition boundary, right, PHP stun will combine this knowledge, and it will combine it by using set intersection, right? So it will intersect the set of possible values or the type that the n variable had before with the constraints that are extracted from the condition. Now, here is a problem, right? This is a valid result. It is indeed an intersection of null with a union of integer null. But this is not exactly the optimal form. It would be hard to reason against such type. So when union and intersection types are created in a PHP stun, it will always go through an algorithm. And this algorithm tries to maintain what we may call a canonical form. Right? It will try to remove everything that's unnecessary. So the first thing that this algorithm will do, that it will do a mechanical transformation. It will always want to keep the intersection operation within the union types and not the other way around. Right? So it will just do a mechanical transformation like this. Right? This, this is equal, so these are equal expressions. Right? Now, it will look at the intersection of integer and null, right? And what it will, will determine is that by using, again, the is super type of method, it will try to understand like, what is the relationship between the integer type and the null type, right? And the super type of will return no, which means there is no, in, the, the intersection of these types is empty, right? A PHP stun has a special type which represents the scenario. We have a special type which can represent an empty set. So that's what we will use. We will use the never type, right? In the second case, the PHP stun will look at the intersection of null with the null type, right? So what it will do is that it will once again use the is super type of method to understand what is, well, like, what is the relation between null type and null type, right? And the is super type of method will return true. Right? Because every type is a super type of itself. Right? And because it returns uh, true or yes, right, that, that, that it is indeed a super type, right? PHP stun will know that the, the one of those null, null values, null types, is useless. So it can remove it. So it simply refines to a union of never with null, with null type. Now, PHP stun will once again use the super type of method to understand like how, how, what is the relation between never and null type, right? And this time, right, PHP stun will see that the never type 
is a subtype of the null type. And in case of a union, right, it means that you can remove it. So after all this transformation, and multiple and multiple is super set of calls, PHP stamp will, fi will finally figure out that the type of the n variable uh, within the first positive branch is null. Now, but that, what was our goal? We were supposed to check whether the required call is valid. So once again, we will call this super type of method, right? And we will see that there is no intersection between the int type, which is required by the function, and between the null type. There is no value for which it could possibly work. So this is invalid. Now, the else if, right? First, we will try to compute like what is the type of the n variable before the is string function is called, right? And we will once again, we will start with the initial type, which is the nullable int, right? And then we will know from the if condition that because the negative path was taken, that it cannot be null, right? So we will use the set difference operation to remove the null, right? Now the transformation is fairly straightforward. We will expand the union, right? Now we will see that there is that null has no has an empty intersection with the integer type, so it means that by removing it, it does nothing, right? And we will also see that removing null from null because because they are super type of each other, right? So so the result is never, which we will get, right? So this will simplify to a union of integer and never, and this is the same case as we have. Before, if you union with a never type, it almost always you can remove the never type based again on the super type of call, and we will get integer, right? So now this integer that is the type of the n variable before the is string method is called. Now, from the from the condition, we will extract that to pass the condition, you need to be off string type. That's fairly straightforward. It's an is call, is string call, right? And again, using the same rules, we will compute an intersection, right? We will, PHP stand will determine that the type of the n variable within the else if branch is an intersection of int and string, right? And we will again use the is super type of method, right, to determine what is the relationship between int and string, right? And we'll see that there is no, that the intersection is empty which we can simplify to the never type. Now, we were supposed to check whether the require in call is valid. Now, this may seem interesting or like unexpected, but you applying the same rules we have applied before. We will check, we will check whether integer type is a super type of type never. And then the answer is yes, it is a super type because never is subtype of all types, right? So this call is valid, right? Using the same rules again and again. But there is one thing that you may notice, that this is actually a dead code, right? The is string call will always evaluate the false. Now, there is one rule that PHP Sun currently doesn't like, fully utilize. But if you evaluate an expression, and the, and the type of the expression is never, then you always know that, that the code is dead. Right? It means they're terminated. It means that an exception has been thrown, or that the condition is always false. Now, the last call. First, we need to determine like what is. Yeah, yeah. We need to determine what is the type of the n variable after the entire if statement, right? And we will use the same rule that we have used in the first example, right? We need to compute the union of the type of the n variable within all the branches. Now, because the else branch is missing, it needs to compute, like, in, uh, like assume that there is an empty else branch and compute the type of the n variable for the else branch as well, right? In the first case, uh, the type in the first, if the type of n variable was an integer, but there is a return, this this block of code is early terminated, as we call it in PHP stands terminology, which one way you can represent it, that you may say that the resulting type out of this block 
is never, right? In the second else if block, we have determined that the type is never, right? And the type within the, uh, the not implicitly visible else branch, right, is, is an integer without string, right? Because we know, we know that the type before was an integer, and we know that the is string will return false, so we know that it cannot be string, and using the same rules, we will simplify this to just an int. And you, then, you can indeed call a require int method, a require int function with an integer, right? Easy enough. Yes, this is indeed valid. Now, everything I have shown in this quite long example has been using just one method. We have been using the super type of method again and again, right? But if you actually look at the type interface, there is a lot more method. Like, there is a lot more method. So let's look at some of the methods that are also on the type interface. Right? For example, there is a method, it's callable, right? Now, how can such method be implemented, right? For the integer type, we know that no integer is callable, so that's easy, right? But for the string type, it gets interesting because some strings are callable, but not all strings are callable, right? So we will once again, even though the method is called is callable, so you might have expected it to return a Boolean type, but PHP Sander once again used the trinary logic, right? So we can return not only true or false, but we can also return the maybe state. That is a state that is neither true, neither false, right? It is the middle ground, right? Because we just doesn't know, right? The string may be callable, but it may also not be callable. Like it depends on the, on the, on the specific value, right? So for the string type, it is maybe. But for the constant string type, right, you know the concrete value, right? So you can actually determine exactly whether this specific string is callable or not. So you return either yes or no based on the concrete value. Mm -hmm. Now, what is important about the trinary logic is that it not only allows PHP Sun to accurately model the, the situation when there is some uncertainty, right? I deal with accordingly. But it also combines very well through the intersection and the union operations. So, for example, how would a scalable method be implemented on the union type, right? So if you have a union of two types, A and B, then if both of these types, if both A and B are for sure callable, right? Then we know that the entire union is also for sure callable, right? And if one of, huh, that's, yeah, okay, it's correct. Uh, now, if we know for sure that neither A nor B is callable, right? That, that neither in A nor in B is a single value that is callable, that we also know that the, in the union, there is no value that is, that is callable. So we know for sure that this union type is not callable. But in all other cases, we have to maybe, because we know that there may be values that are callable, but they also, there, it may not be callable, right? Maybe. The intersection app is a bit trickier, right? But if you draw the pictures with the specific values, it will be, it's not hard to understand, right? So there are cases where, again, we will return yes, right? If one of the A or B is callable, for sure, let me know the entire intersection type is callable. And this is important because, well, it will come in handy in the next slide. Right? Also, there are some cases where we know that it's definitely not callable, right? But in other cases, it just, hmm, maybe we don't have enough information. Now, the power of intersection type. There are some types, some, we have talked about many possible implementation of the type interface that PHP Stun has, but there are some implementations that I have not yet talked about, right? These implementations are very special because they know about the values actually very little, 
right? That's the specific. They know very little. So for example, the callable method, right? It doesn't know whether it's a string, right? It doesn't know whether it's an object. It doesn't know whether you can call a method on it. It doesn't know whether you can access a property on it. It doesn't know whether you can iterate over it, right? It knows so little, right? It knows just one specific thing, and that is whether the values are callable, right? The same, for example, for the has offset type. It only knows that there is an offset of specific type, right? But it doesn't know, well, like, can you call a method on me, right? If you call a method, what will it return? Like, it knows very little. Now, here is the important part, right? Well, okay, an example, right? The important part is that these types know very little, but through the power of intersection type, they can be combined, right? So you can combine knowledge, and by combining pieces of small pieces of knowledge, you get more knowledge, right? And by knowing more, you can, you can determine more. So for example, you receive an object of type object, right? And you know very little, like what? You, can, you don't know what methods you can call. You don't know what properties you can, you can access. You don't know the types of the properties, right? But if you do a property exist call, right, then, then we know that why, there is at least one property, right? And the property is named 8, right? And you can, using the intersection, you can attach this new piece, tiny piece of information. Like, it says very little. It says just one thing. It has a, there is a property, and this property is named 8, right? And you can attach this tiny piece of information to the object type, right? And you can attach many pieces of information. Like, if there, were, if there would be, like, an is iterable call, right? You can attach the information that it is iterable, and you can attach one piece of information after another. Another example. You receive an array, right? So you know it's an array, but, like, which keys there exist and what is the type of value. And again, like, it's an array, but you know, you don't know very much about it. Right? But if you assign a specific value to a specific index, then you know that for sure there is an offset A, and we actually know the type of the offset. Right? And you can combine this tiny piece of information, right, which is extracted from the assignment with the original type. Right? And you can assign multiple, right, on multiple keys, and you can keep adding these pieces of information. Right? And the PHP sounds logic, you know, like using the algorithms, we have talked about intersection types, and where you can remove unnecessary types, and where you combine it, when you can combine them together, right? It will still work. Now, there is one piece, uh, well, there is one thing that's interesting about this last slide. It actually doesn't work. Not yet. This is not implemented in PHP stun, but it could be, right? You could do it, right? I have shown you the way, right? There is actually an has offset type, right? But it, it, it's not used here in this case, right? But it could be used, right? And there can be more like specific types carrying specific pieces of information can be added to the type system. And using the intersection type, you can combine these pieces of information to create more accurate knowledge about the values within the types. That's all for me. Thank you for your time. <laughs> Feel free to ask me some questions. Can we get the magic magic cube? Almost. Right. Oh, sorry, I'm not good at sports. Um, two things. Uh, what's the next big thing for PHP Stan, in your opinion? And um, is all of PHP Stan's code base passing its own rules, or would you say that you have some things that are still so hacky that you didn't implement them by the rules? Well, uh, the next things that I would like to see, like that would help personally me the most, are generic types, 
that are sort of being worked on, but not actively. There's also some refactoring uh, for the tra tra traversal algorithm, which handles all of course stuff, which would support like better code elimination and handling better of like continue to and break to, like that it will actually be able to compute these cases more precisely, right? And about the PHP stun code base, I'm pretty sure there are some ignored errors. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, I think we have some ignored errors. But mostly, like, if there is a bug which we need to fix, then there is high probability that it will get fixed. So there is, like, or, or we just update the PHP code, like, PHP stun code to just pass the test. Like, you can usually find a way to write it in a way that's easier for the static analyzer to understand, right? It, and it often it leads, leads to better code. But like if the static analyzer can understand it better, humans can often also understand it better. Another question, if there is any. Uh, first, uh, congratulations for the talk. This actually was a blow my talk. Uh, PHP does the, all that stuff so fast. How? PHP the language? PHP is done, do, do, does all that stuff oh, that you show I fast. Actually, I actually don't understand it. I, I would have expected <laughs> to be slower. But my guess is that we are benefiting heavily from the optimizations done for PHP 7. Right? Because what we are doing is, is very heavy on memory and it's very heavy on CPU. We do very little IO, right? And PHP, PHP 7 is especially good at optimizing memory and, uh, and reducing the CPU usage, right? So I think there are ha like it would be so much slower, I think, on PHP 5. Oh, so okay. like, we also, we don't support PHP 5 since. So you can't even try the slow version. But, uh, <laughs> yeah. OK. Hey, uh, at the very beginning of this presentation, you said that PHP stun is based on abstract interpretation. Am I right? Yes, loosely. Like loosely. There are a lot of stuff that are currently handled differently, specifically yeah. in relates to how assignments are processed. But yes, the, the idea is that it basically it is an interpreter of the PHP code, mm -hmm. but it modifies semantic of the operations. Because I want to ask for some question. Uh, in the former model, abstract interpretation, there are too many things. Too many things. The first thing is uh, you have to define the abstract domain, which is uh, defined by the abstract state. And the second thing is the transfer function, which uh, accepts the abstract state as its output, and it produces the abstract state uh, at its output. Yeah, so the input is abstract state, and output is also the abstract state. And uh, if you will define your own checker, your own analysis, how you will define this abstract domain and the transfer function? Is it something like general abstract domain and transfer function, which you have to extend, or uh, how does it work at all? Well, the abstract state is defined. There is a there is a class called scope, which which holds the state that is. Like it's an immutable, Im immutable class that's continually updated with each state modifications. But like in general, we are there are many cases where where we like we're not quite doing it the way the, the standard models does it. Mm -hmm. Right. So for example, uh, the the way cycles are handled. Like they would be for a whole another talk. Like how how do you handle cycles? Right? Yeah. But if you actually implement it the way it's normally handled in abstract interpretation, it loses too much precision too quickly, right? Yeah. So, it, so because of the way how PHP developers tend to write their code, PHP Sun needs to do some more tricks to not lose the information or try not to lose the information, right? Because, okay. because not yeah. normally like it expands the set of possible values too quickly, Right, and and it takes branches which which PHP stuff can know that cannot be taken during, for example, the first iteration. Yeah, cool. Thank you very much. No problem. Any other question? Wow, one more question. Yeah. How does it handle the serialized object? Well, 
So you just presented a nice algorithm where PHP stand does some union types. And I was asking myself, how does it handle the serialized object within an algorithm? Serialized? The input is a serialized object. Yeah, I don't think it will handle it at all. <laughs> okay, thank you. Okay, that's, that's all for the question. Thank you for your time.